everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Brandi Frost, and I am a neonatologist at North Shore University Health System in Evanston, Illinois, as well as a clinical assistant professor of pediatrics with the University of Chicago Pritzker School of Medicine. I would like to disclose that I am a paid consultant for Mead Johnson Nutritionals. To begin, I would like to review the importance of growth in preterm infants. The overall goal for growth is to approximate in utero fetal growth rate, this proves to be very challenging. Many preterm infants, particularly the smallest and earliest preterm infants, will experience postnatal growth failure. This occurs for a multitude of reasons. These tiny infants do not often tolerate full enteral feedings. As such, they require parenteral nutrition, which does not support in utero growth rates well. Finally, many of these infants are critically ill and in a catabolic state. Unfortunately, Postnatal growth failure is associated with poor neurodevelopmental outcome. In studies by Aaron Krenz et al. and separately by Franz, both published in Pediatrics, postnatal growth failure in extremely low birth weight infants was associated with poor neurodevelopmental outcomes at 18 to 22 months corrected gestational age. Furthermore, improved growth has been shown to correlate with improved long-term neurodevelopment. Although there are many components of preterm nutrition, the focus today will be on lipid requirements in preterm infants. Lipids, and in particular long-chain polyunsaturated fatty acids, contribute to growth, development, and long-term health. Long-chain polyunsaturated fatty acids will be discussed separately. Many preterm infants require parenteral nutrition initially. Parenteral lipid emulsions were first developed in the 1960s for critically ill adults who can more readily convert these compounds into long-chain polyunsaturated fatty acids, but the preterm infant lacks this ability. The traditional lipid emulsion product, which is soy-based, was approved by the FDA in the 1980s. This product has a high content of the essential fatty acids alpha-linolenic acid, or ALA, and linoleic acid, or LA, which prevent essential fatty acid deficiencies. There are newer products now available, which may contain fish oil as a source of long-chain polyunsaturated fatty acids. There is limited data available on these newer products, and it is not clear if they will provide added benefit, but they may prevent or improve parenteral nutrition-associated cholestasis. This chart illustrates the difference in parenteral lipid formulations. The traditional soybean oil product is demonstrated in the top row. This product has been used in NICUs as standard of care until recently. This product may be harmful when used for prolonged periods of time due to excess polyunsaturated fatty acid and linoleic acid content, which can lead to inhibition of desaturase enzymes used to synthesize long-chain polyunsaturated fatty acids and can also increase oxidative stress. The bottom row illustrates newer lipid emulsion products, which may contain various combinations of soybean oil, medium chain triglycerides, olive oil, and fish oil. Additionally, there is a fish oil product rich in omega-3 long chain polyunsaturated fatty acids, which was recently approved for use by the FDA. After birth, when initiating parenteral lipids, it is optimal to start between birth and the first one to two days of life. Lipids should be initiated at one to two grams per kilogram per day and advance daily to a maximum of four grams per kilogram per day. At present, soybean emulsion or mixed emulsions remain standard of care. The fish oil emulsion product may promote excessive eicosapentaenoic acid levels, which has an unclear effect. Thus, the use of fish oil emulsion should be reserved for those infants with parenteral nutrition associated cholestasis at this time. Now we will switch to discuss enteral feedings. The enteral route is the ideal manner in which to feed preterm infants. Therefore, it is important to begin enteral feedings as soon as possible after birth. Enteral feeding provides many benefits, including promotion of gastrointestinal development, prevention of villus atrophy, promotion of GI motility, and regular stooling. Furthermore, achieving full enteral feeding decreases risk of cholestasis and osteopenia. The preterm infant has immature lipase activity, as well as low carnitine palmitoyl transferase, which is used to transport long-chain fatty acids to the mitochondria. However, human milk and preterm formula both contain carnitine and lipases, so enteral feeding initiated early can help support these immature processes in the preterm infant. With human milk, fats constitute the majority of energy, comprising about 40 to 50% of total energy. 
Enteral feedings provide 5 to 7 grams of fat per kilogram per day. The majority of fat in enteral feedings is contained as triglycerides in human milk and infant formula, with a glycerol backbone esterified to three fatty acids. In human milk, lipid content varies from person to person. Now we will look at the content of human milk compared to preterm human formula. In human milk, saturated fat is easily absorbed by preterm infants. The palmitic acid in human milk is in the beta position as compared to being in the alpha position in cow's milk. Beta position palmitic acid in human milk makes it more readily absorbable. Digestion of human milk is aided by lingual lipase, gastric lipase, and bile salt activated lipase in breast milk fed infants. These infants do, however, have low levels of pancreatic lipase. In contrast, donor milk, used often in neonatal ICUs, is usually from mothers of term infants. Term milk contains less lipid overall. Furthermore, the process of pasteurization used for donor milk inactivates lipoprotein lipase as well as bile salt activated lipase, both of which are used for triglyceride digestion. Therefore, when possible, an infant's own mother's milk is ideally suited as the best enteral food for a preterm infant. Briefly, preterm infant formula lipid content is made up of a mixture of medium chain triglycerides, as well as vegetable oils rich in polyunsaturated long chain triglycerides. These formulas are also routinely supplemented with long chain polyunsaturated fatty acids, which are discussed elsewhere. So in summary, I would like to go over some key points to take away from this discussion on lipid requirements in the preterm infant. They are as follows. Enteral feeding is the optimal nutritional support for preterm infants. When parenteral nutrition is needed, it is recommended to start lipid at 1 to 2 grams per kilogram per day and advance to a maximum of 4 grams per kilogram per day. Soybean emulsions or mixed emulsions are the current standard of care for parenteral lipids in preterm infants. When an infant develops parenteral nutrition associated cholestasis, fish oil emulsion can also be used. Human milk and donor milk contain varied amounts of lipid. Donor milk is often sourced from mothers of term infants, and pasteurization methods affect enzymes that aid in digestion. Finally, attention to growth is critical in the NICU, as poor growth is associated with adverse neurodevelopment. These are my references, and I thank you very much for your attention. This video was provided to you by Aspen and supported by an educational grant from Reckitt Mead Johnson. This five-part video series on the nutrition requirements and feeding issues for the preterm infant will be available on the Aspen website at nutritioncare.org forward slash neonatal care resources.